Massive update on ChatGPT this week. Let's get into it. We're talking about plugins and browsing today. It's going to be super interesting. I'm going to show you some of the best use cases for SEO to get more rankings, more traffic, and more results with SEO. And by the way, these are the similar tactics I've used to grow an AI SEO website in like 72 hours. And it's gone from literally zero and not even existing on Sunday to getting a consistent and growing amount of clicks every single day with AI. So I'm going to share some of the use cases of plugins, chat GPT and web browsing today so that you can get better results. Let's go. So chat GPT have just launched web plugins. You can check them out at OpenAI. Obviously you need a plus account as well to do this. So you're not going to be using 3.5. It'll be GPT-4. And you can see here under the list, we've got browsing, which is under beta and plugins, which is under beta. So these are two new versions of chat GPT that just came out very recently, if we check our settings, and if you want to enable the, I didn't even get a notification about this, but basically what you do is you go to your settings. I didn't even realize it was here until today. And then you have under your settings, beta features. And from here, you can see web browsing and plugins. And to enable them or disable them, you click like this. Now, one thing I've noticed is that ChatGPT4 seems to be a lot slower with this option enabled. So something to be aware of there. But if you want to give this a test and we'll run through how to do SEO with them today so you can get better rankings, improve your rankings and what sort of capabilities it has. And now to enable these, you just click on the arrow down here and then you would go to browsing or beta. So for example, if you want to do web browsing, which means you're connected to the internet and you can ask ChatGPT to search the internet for whatever you're looking for. So if we, for example, said to ChatGPT, find me the latest keyword trends for ChatGPT, then it's going to think about it. it takes quite a while but eventually it will load and give you some data back. So you can see it's browsing the web now, searching the last keyword trends for ChatGPT 2023. So we didn't even type in 2023, but it's figured it out itself that that needs to be the latest data. Clicking on link, clicking buttons, that's what we like to see. Scans through the content and then it finishes browsing. Now, one of the only other tools that I've seen that does this right now, and it does it for free, is Bard. But if you say to Bard, find me the latest keyword trends for ChatGPT, we can compare the results and see how effective each AI tool is. So you can see the responses on BARD are a lot faster, but they're less scientific as well. So for example, you can see this is based on data. It's giving us some index points. So like, for example, you can see previous to ChatGPT launching, there was zero search data. And then in February, the index is at 100. So obviously the search volume for that keyword has increased. It explains the chart down here. And basically the data, it takes a little bit longer to load, but it actually browses the web gives you the latest search trends based on the keyword that you're looking for. You can see whether it's rising or dropping and it's actually connected to the internet. Whereas if you look at Bard, the data is very generic and it doesn't give you much information, but it is quicker. Now let's talk about the actual use cases for SEO, because obviously it's one thing being able to browse the data. It's another figuring out how to use this so you can get actionable tips to improve your results. Now we'll come on to some more use cases in a minute. But let's switch to the plugins, which is pretty exciting. So if we click on plugins like this and you can see it's enabled with the blue tick over here. So if you want to switch back to the normal default mode, you click default. If you want to use plugins, you click plugins like this. And then you can select your plugins from the plugin store, right? So you just click on the arrow down here, hit plugin store. And these plugins are not created by OpenAI. And then if we hit OK like this, we can browse the plugin store and see what plugins are available to help us. Now, there are loads, but we really want to focus on the SEO related ones. And you can see there's so many different types of plugins. It's pretty much endless. For example, you can see plugins for Expedia, Zapier, that sort of thing. But we want to focus on the SEO related plugins. Now, one of the best plugins for SEO on ChatGPT is WebPilot. So if we hit install like this, and basically it will allow you to browse web pages, generate articles, and basically scrape other URLs on the internet to do your research for you. So it's a very useful feature for SEO. And then once you're in plugins like this on the URL, you can click down here and enable your plugin. And now we can start doing some cool stuff. So for example, let's take my new AI SEO site that we set up this week. If you haven't seen my other videos on that, check it out. You see it's already getting traffic, but we can take some of the pages and then plug it in to ChatGPT. And then you say, based on this URL, how can I improve my content to rank better? It's going to start using WebPilot like this, and you can see it's used it now. And then you'll get some suggestions to improve your content. And then it will basically generate a quick checklist that you can use to re-optimize your content. So based on this article, it tells me, right, I need to optimize my content with better keywords. 
improve the readability. I should add internal and external links, meta descriptions. Some of it's rather generic. That's one of the biggest limitations. Like it has actually checked the page and seen that I use images and it's seen that I don't have alt text for the images, but it does feel slightly generic. It doesn't feel like the recommendations are that personalized to the content, which is a limitation for sure. Because for example, mobile friendly optimization, well, if you check the page on mobile, we can see it is optimized for mobile already. Content looks good. It's all good to go on that. Like this is the early days. Is this going to change your business and your whole SEO strategy? I don't think so. If you compare it to Phrase.io, for example, and we create a new document here, we can put in our keyword like this and compare side on side, like which tool gives you the best optimization strategy. And I would say, honestly, it's going to be to like Phrase or Surfer, just because they give you a lot more actionable and details and actually personalized recommendations. This kind of feels like just a generic checklist, even if it does have specific ways to improve your content. And I think it's a little bit misleading. For example, it recommends using headers, but actually you can see this headers down here. If we inspect that is a H3 tag, so we know that we've already formatted our headers. So just one thing to be aware of there is that you shouldn't let this mislead you or think that your content isn't that good because actually it's probably better than you think. If you compare it to say the date that you get on Phrase, Surfer or whatever anal analysis tool you're trying to use, you'll see that it gives you a, break a better breakdown of like the words, header. Everything's just a lot more tailored to your SEO content. It's a lot more actionable and it's a lot more personalized. This kind of feels generic. However, having said that, I know how fast this technology develops. It's probably going to get much better very quickly. Now, one thing that could be really useful is you could take the XML sitemap from your website or your competitors and then scrape and analyze all the topics you've published content around to keep improving it, right? So for example, if you take this sitemap and we go into posts, and this is a list of all our URLs for our website, and we could plug that into ChatGPT and analyze it in terms of our topical authority, but also where we need to improve. I'm going to switch back to our other English website just so it's easier to understand. So if we take a post sitemap like this and we could say to WebPilot, analyze this sitemap and give me examples of where I could improve my top core authority, plus what keywords I'm missing. You paste in the XML sitemap like that. So for example, if I look at a competitor that's ranking in a lot of similar results for this, for my website, Chipper Burst, well, if I type in sitemap.xml like this, you can see the details here. So usually it's like sitemap.xml to find the main sitemap. And now you can see that the results are coming back from this analysis. So based on sitemap of cheaperbirds.com, it appears this website is focused on providing information about bird species, bird watching, bird feeding. So it understands what we're talking about and the topics that we've included in our sitemap, which is really good. And then it's given us some other areas we could focus on to improve our topical authority and therefore rank for potential keywords that we might be missing in our sitemap already. So for example, like bird habitats, and it gives us recommendations for that, bird behavior, conservation, photography, and these are all opportunities. And the good thing about this is that this plugin basically analyzes your website, finds potential angles that you wouldn't have thought of already, and then you can figure out, okay, here's where I am, it's a gap, and now I can bridge the gap. And whether you create the content with AI or human written content, you can easily scan through and find the potential gaps and opportunities to improve your SEO strategy. I feel like that's a much better use of WebPilot versus the SEO checklist, which feels a little bit generic. But either way, this is really cool. And it's pretty exciting to see what's possible with ChatGPT as it progresses. I mean, it's been less than six months since it came out. And you know, this tool within a month or within two months, it's just going to get better and better and better. If you look at AI PRM, for example, and the way that plugin has developed over time, it's crazy. It started off with like 80 prompts. Now it's got over 2000. So these tools are in beta. And then as they develop, they iterate and improve. It's given us some other cool keyword ideas, for example, like bird watching in location, best places to see bird species. And I know for a fact, we haven't covered those sort of topics in our content. I've never really thought about it. So this is quite a cool way of doing keyword research and finding the keywords that you probably wouldn't think of and therefore your competitors wouldn't think of. And it's given us recommendations. For example, we could talk about bird watching equipment like bird identification books, portable chairs, tents, that sort of stuff. Actually, bird watching seems pretty expensive, so I'm not going to get into that anytime soon. But it's a good opportunity for an affiliate and bird conservation as well. This would actually be a really good skyscraper topic. If you created an article about bird conservation, it's a very positive thing that stimulates the emotions of potential webmasters who could then link to it. And that'd be a great way to attract backlinks. Now, what's interesting is you could actually take two different websites, for example, yours 
and your competitors, and then create a competitor gap analysis, which you can do on other tools like Ahrefs, for example, but on here, you can do it for cheaper and then figure out which keyword opportunities your competitors have covered that you haven't and get some specific SEO keywords for my website. So you can see the prompt down here. We're going to give it a go now, see what that comes up with. And you can see based on the results it's given us, it's actually created a strategic high level view of what keywords we could cover that I haven't mentioned, but my competitor has. There's loads of keywords like, for example, how to protect birds, bird activism, bird conservation that I haven't covered on my website. Potentially I could to find more keyword opportunity. The same with bird news. I don't do any sort of news on the website, but I could as well. Now, some of it's going to be irrelevant. For example, like this, I'm not going to create a whole bird app. That'll be a whole different tangent for another business. And then it's given us some keyword ideas based on scraping my competitor and then comparing it to my site. Now you have to be careful with some of these AI tools and recommendations because sometimes the information isn't correct or it's a bit generic. So let's have a look and see, have I covered some of these topics already? Is it sending me around the houses on a crazy wild goose chase or are these actual keywords that I haven't covered yet and therefore it can be very actionable? And if we check my website and see what pages are indexed on Google, so what pages have I created so far from SEO strategy and then what keywords am I ranking for? For example, like this keyword was recommended on the list. Well, we can see here that I've never covered this keyword, right? So it's actually actionable. It is a keyword I could cover. If I check F's keyword explorer for that keyword, you can see that it's medium difficult. It has search volume, has traffic potential, and I've never covered it. I wouldn't have even thought about going for that keyword. And you can see the competitor that I scraped is actually ranking first for this. So that's a really powerful use case of this tool because to do that all manually yourself or to figure it out yourself with a lot of time, whereas you can do it within minutes with this plugin, very powerful and find low competition, high volume of keywords that most people are not trying to rank for and therefore you get more opportunities. And also here's the cool thing. This isn't just an easy keyword. It's not just a keyword that's going to get traffic. It's a money page, right? So it's identified an opportunity to more money on my website, really powerful. And then based on that, we could dive into more related terms. We could dive into more questions. We could look at what else this ranks for. And basically that one single idea from ChatGPT creates a cascading effect, loads of other ideas for keywords. So pretty exciting. Now, the obvious thing to use this for is then an optimization of scraping your competitors, blah, blah, blah. But we don't like to be obvious on this YouTube channel. So let's look at some creative ways we could use this for link building, right? So if we said to WebPilot, give me a list of 20 or more websites that accept guest posts in the pets niche, that's my niche, but you can replace this with whatever industry you're in that would be relevant. And then we ask for that list to be relevant for guest posting for chipperbirds.com, which is my website, but you can replace that with whatever website yours is. It shows you the request shows you the response. Obviously that's very messy and unformatted data. So we're not going to use that. But if we scroll down, we actually get a list of relevant websites that accept guest posts in the pets niche. So it's basically done all the prospecting for you. It's filtered through and found the websites that have openly accepted guest posts. And then you can just have a look through and click on the links here, which is really cool. So scrape the web It's found the right for us page. Some of the links don't work, so it's not perfect every time. But if we filter that down, do a bit of manual editing ourselves, then we can see that we've got a bunch of guest posting pages related to pets that we could ask for a backlink. Now, would I recommend guest posting on all of those sites? No, because you've got to do a bit of filtering yourself and figure out which sites are getting traffic, that sort of thing. But it gives us a starting point. So for example, like this link that is recommended, if we check through, we scroll down the page, we can see the Right for Dogs page here, and then you can pitch your article that's relevant to my niche and start doing your link building outreach there. Now, I don't think this is perfect, but it's interesting to see what you can do and the potential of it. All right, so let's step up a notch now because we know ChatGPT is connected to the internet. We know it can write content. Why can't it just create a whole campaign for us, right? So I created this prompt, as you can see, for the skyscraper article, which I created in my video the other day with AI. I said, give me a list of websites talking about climate change. I could ask for a backlink. Give me a table tracker for the outreach to manage the response rates so that I can paste them into Google Sheets and write the whole email funnel for the link building outreach campaign. Start to finish, let's see what it can do. It said it will come back to me later with some backlink requests. It did and it left me waiting there. So we had to create another prompt down here, say give me a list. And then we've got a list of the websites we could potentially reach out to. Now, is it highly likely that NAS are going to link to me? 
no, isn't, but it does give me a list of websites and I'm sure I could ask it to expand on that to give me even more related articles to climate change that I could reach out to get links to my skyscraper article. And then it's given me a average tracker table. So we've got the website, cont email, first cont response, date response, backlink granted, etc. So we can easily track the outreach, how many websites have reached out to, to ask for a backlink, and then which pages actually gave us a backlink. So that's a really useful tracker. And then we've got the email funnel for the link building outreach. So based on my skyscraper article here, it's actually written an email funnel tailored to my website, Vogel Wonderland, the one and only, the greatest AI generated site. And you can see here it's tailored the whole email campaign without any prompting based on that article we wrote before. So it's talked about bird conservation, impacts of climate change, and it's asked for a backlink. And then we can insert our article here. It's also written the second follow-up email and the third follow-up email as well to when the person adds our link and we can just say thank you. Plus we've got the list of websites we could reach out to. So this saves you a lot of time because you can create the skyscraper article with complexity to make sure your content is sourced and fact-based. Then you can get a list of websites that you could reach out to based on that skyscraper article. And you can get a table tracker for making sure that you track all the responses and what your conversion rate is for the link building outreach. And finally, we've got the whole email campaign written by AI. What used to take a whole day now takes about a minute. And I love the fact that with this tool, you can just scrape the internet and it does so much of the manual work for you if you know how to use it properly. Now, we do need to expand on this because it's going to be difficult to get a link from most of these sites. And also, outreach is a numbers game. So we want to send more emails and get more backlinks back. So I've asked it to give me a list of websites I could reach out to for a backlink. And it's going to use WebPilot again, and we'll see what it comes up with. And now we've got the list of 100 websites I could reach out to. So it had a limited character amount. We've basically got a list of websites that we could reach out to about climate change and promote our article to ask for a backlink. Are all of them going to give us a backlink? Absolutely not. But some of them will. And it's a numbers game of outreach. So there we go. And there you can see. One thing I want to quickly say is when you're using these plugins to do your prompts, it actually takes quite a while to load. But if you're doing a complicated prompt like this, it might take a few minutes. You grab yourself a cup of tea, get yourself a Snickers bar, and then come back once it's ready. Now, what happens if you want to do a lot of research in one go? Because there's no point asking it on poco and poco, asking little bits by little bits and just wasting a lot of time with different prompts. Why not just ask this plugin to do everything for you for your content outline or for your SEO research in one shebang, right? And here we go. So what I've done for this prompt is for the keyword that ChatGPT recommended earlier based on what my competitors are writing about that I am not. I've asked it to give me the top SEO results for this keyword, a suggestion based on the SERPs, aka the top 10 results from articles heading, title, meta description, and SEO title, any Amazon products to include, any people also ask questions and recommendations on word count. So basically, go out there, do all my research and do what most people would spend like an hour or three hours doing themselves. And here it's come back to me using WebPilot, the plugin, and it said based on the search results for plants for birds, here are the insights. So it's given us the top three SEO results. And then we've got suggestions for our heading, title, etc. So it's matched the keyword to the search intent, the best plans for attracting birds. It's given us a title based on that article. It's written the meta description, so that saves us a bit of time. And also we've got the SEO title to increase our click-through rates. Obviously, we're not going to include our name at the end, but we could use this and it works very nicely. And then it's recommended the Amazon products to include within our article. And we could probably ask it for links to that, along with the prices, the name of the product, and we've got our top three products there. On top of that, we've got the people also ask questions. So these are questions related to our key that we know we could answer in the FAQs. Um, with a, if we put these on our page, it's going to make our content more relevant to the person who's searching for that keyword. And then finally, we have recommendations on word account. Now that seems rather generic. It hasn't scraped the top 10 competitors. It's just recommended us best practices. But again, if we were giving an article outline to a writer and we had the outline plus all of these results, well, we've just saved ourselves tons of time and we've gone in the right direction towards creating better content for our readers. So overall, WebPilot is a really cool plugin for SEO. Very powerful. It can do a lot of the link building outreach for you. You can set up your campaigns. You can do a lot of the research. And, and today you've learned how to create and optimize your SEO content, do keyword research and find new opportunities with SEO, how to find money page keywords using this plugin while scraping your competition, 
finding link building prospects. So we've got a lot done today. I think this plugin is just going to get better and better. This plugin section is still in beta now and it works really well. So as it improves, it's going to be really interesting to see how that develops. If you want a free SEO chat GPT course and you can steal the exact prompts that I've used to increase my SEO traffic, you can see all the video tutorials plus the prompts in each section to get better rankings, improve your SEO traffic. I'll leave a link in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do. And just before I go, one quick update on the AI SEO website that I created a few days ago. So you saw me set up, you saw me buy the domain, you saw me pump out 800 articles, very controversial and polarizing topic. I know some people were totally against it. Some people said it was everything that you shouldn't do with AI. So far, we've created a fresh new domain and it's just getting traffic more and more every single day. You can see we're already up to 53 total search clicks and that's only up to two days ago, right? That's Wednesday, this book, 17th. The traffic is increasing every single day. AI SEO is blowing my mind. Interesting experiments. So you can see decent click-through rate, good amount of impressions, good amount of clicks, good average search position. Very interesting to see where this goes. If it continues, wow, it's going to be crazy. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.